spend the next 20 minutes talking about uh, introduction to CORD, and then I'm going to steal time for myself and giving the following talk about the residential case specifically. And then we'll follow on with mobile and enterprise and the rest of the CORD family. So I'm going to start off just by, by reminding everyone as to what the motivation for CORD is. And it basically goes out to the edge, the very, very edge of the network. And in the telco world, that's the central office. But when we say central office, it, it, came, it gave us a really, really nice acronym. But don't limit yourself to the building. This is wherever the edge of the network is to you. That, and that might be out in the enterprise as well. But for, for, the, for the sake of argument here, let's think about it as the, as the telco central office. Um, there's thousands of them. They are the point at which all the, the fiber and the, the backhaul networks come in that connect enterprises, that connect residences, and, and, and basically also the mobile customers. And so it is the key vantage point for providing edge services. So we all know that there's tons of services in the cloud, back in the data center. What are the services that we can also provide at the edge? And while we're at it, why don't we just make that edge a little easier to live with from, from, a, uh, from a service provider point of view? And what I mean by that is there's several challenges in delivering service from the edge. There's a very high CapEx OpEx cost, and it really traces back to this point, which there are hundreds of different heterogeneous closed proprietary systems that have accumulated over, over decades in the telco edge. They're not programmable. That lim limits innovation. It's very slow to change. And that's really what this is about. We're going to lower the CapEx costs and the op OpEx costs of these, these edge devices, and we're going to turn them into something that's more uh, agile and programmable so that the telcos can offer new services. So in a nutshell, then, what CORD is about is to bring the economies of a data center, which is basically we're going to build everything out of commodity components, and the agility of the cloud to the edge of the telco network. And so we often take a very network operator-centric perspective of this, but this story is just as important to the cloud operators. And so the other way of thinking about this is we're bringing access as a service to the cloud. And they're exactly the same thing, just from two different perspectives. So when, when I'm talking through what CORD is, don't always put yourself in, in the telco central, central office. Think of yourself also as being at the very, very edge of Google's network or M, uh, Amazon's network or Microsoft's cloud and so on, because it's exactly the same problem. So this is an open source project. We've heard some great stories about what it means to participate in open source. I'm going to try to give you a sense of the ecosystem, because that's absolutely key to understanding how you can participate. And so we start with a vision. And this vision is pretty high level, but it also has some specific elements to it. So let me just walk you through the, the common points that we all essentially are, are behind as we work on Cord. The first one is that we're building Cord around commodity servers servers and white box switches. That doesn't mean it has to be, but we really need to hit that sweet spot in the way that we're trying to build cords. So we're trying to leverage merchant silicon to the maximum degree possible. The second point is that we're really focused on enabling disaggregation. We don't want to simply take what used to be wrapped in tin and put it in a virtual machine and declare that we're done. We're trying to break things apart into smaller elements because when we have the smaller elements, that leads to more innovation, the possibility of more innovation. The third point is we're trying to leverage SDN to the maximum degree possible. And this is really a point at which the edge of the network is different than the data center. And what I mean by that is it's not just about the plumbing to connect the virtual machines, which is sort of where you, you build a virtual network to connect your, your service and you're kind of done in the data center. It's actually a source of innovative services. So we don't just implement value in virtual machines, we implement value in the switches as well. The fourth point is that we're trying to build an extensible platform. We're not trying to build 20 point solutions. We're trying to build a platform, and then we customize that platform and add value to that platform for different solution or different problems to generate different solutions. So this notion of a platform is absolutely central to what we're doing with Cord. And finally, this is the application of best practices of what happens in the cloud, and so we really need to take advantage of that. So we're building. Uh, autonomic, scalable, robust services, and we're always keeping in mind that the problems we're trying to solve at the edge are not special cased for VNFs and telcos. This is really bringing everything from the cloud, I, the, the cloud space to bear. So that is the vision. And if you go to the CORD website, you'll find some architectural requirements, which this basically reduces down to, to these five points. So we start with that vision, 
and we have a reference architecture. There could be other reference architectures, but we, we, we have at least one reference architecture. You're welcome to, to participate, and again, I'm trying to display the, the, the landscape as to where you can participate. You can, you can bring other architectures, and if you brought another architecture, we would probably work pretty hard to figure out what their commonalities were, and, and because we all benefit if we can get in, in, involved in the same framework, but maybe, maybe that isn't the case. But at least we have one architecture to start with. And inside of that architecture today, we have one reference implementation, and we really do imagine that there could be others. And it's a matter of saying, OK, within the scope of the architecture, I'd like to bring in these other elements. And just to go back to Guru's uh, innovative pipe, innovation pipeline, bring in other elements, and that's perfectly fine. This is the point at which, you know, from an open source community point of view, you step up and say, I'd like to try this. But we do have at least one reference implementation, and that's important that you have something grounded to get started with. And then within that reference implementation, we build solutions. And so this is where you start hearing solutions like R cord and M cord and E cord and so on for residential, mobile, and, and uh, enterprise. But there's multiple solutions. That's great. We can solve this problem. We can solve that problem. But again, drawing attention to the thing in the middle, there is also a reference platform. And that's the thing that everybody leverages. And so I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about the platform because that's key to building the solutions. And it's that collection that is today the reference implementation and the definition of all the interfaces that come from that reference implementation is today's version of the architecture. One last point, it just so happens that as of today, the third release of Cord is now available called Dangerous Edition. So we even have engineering involvement in the naming of our, our releases. The next release you'll, you'll appreciate is called Shared Delusion. Uh, we're gonna try to be a little more positive going forward. Okay, so. What I'm going to do is come down to the reference platform because everything grows out of that. And by the way, it's tiny in this picture and that it's absolutely critical. From an architecting point of view, we have tried to come up with the minimal kernel that allows David's thousand flowers to bloom. And that's really what this is about in, in, in many respects. Now we all have to agree on that minimal kernel. That's, it's sort of the counterpart of the Linux kernel. You have a Linux kernel and then 1,000 flowers can bloom. We're, that's what we're working towards. We don't know, necessarily know that we have exactly the right platform, reference platform, but that is the, the power of this. And in fact, if you look at the Cord community, you'll see a bunch of almost independent projects just running in, in loosely, well, in loose formation right now. Uh, and they, they work pretty much independently. So it's really evolving into the kind of ecosystem or community system that we would like to see. In any case, I'm, I'm now coming back to that platform. Part of the platform is the hardware. And part of the hardware will change as you build new solutions. And so the access piece, you're always going to change out with your access device or somebody else's access de device. It may be targeted at wire, wireline. It may be targeted at wireless. It may be a combination of wireline and wireless. They should both plug into here. That's just fine. But the other part of the platform then is obviously the compute. And there is a switching fabric, again, white box switches. And so what we have built is a pod that everyone else could go replicate. And we've, spent, we've got a bomb so that you can go find exactly what components to buy. And we would re be really, really happy if people found other hardware that would work and we could grow that bomb to include more hardware. But that's where we're leaning on the community. And this is sufficiently complex to kind of exercise all the dimensions of the space. So it has a leaf spine fabric. It has got two virtual racks. Obviously, it's not. We want to keep the price down as much as possible, so we have it populated and made it as large as we could. But it does have the leaf spine switching fabric, which is a critical part of this. All right. So that's the hardware. And again, you can configure it in different ways. Uh, the other part of it is the software, and it's easiest to think of the software in terms of the software stack. And there's three basic pieces to it. There's Virtual machine and container management. So this is compute as a service, and we have network as a service. On compute as a service, you can go grab yourself some virtual machines or containers, and you can load them up with whatever image you want. On compute as on network as a service, you basically load apps onto Onos today. But Onos is basically a platform as a service, and you load control apps on it. And so you can load control apps to manage virtual networks, to manage the fabric, to manage different white box access devices, and to create virtual routers, and so on. But the thing that brings the two together is it doesn't matter if your service is implemented inside of a VM or is implemented by installing flow rules into switches. Those are just two implementations of a common thing. 
And the common thing is the service. And so the, the final layer here is XOS, which is, stands for everything is a service operating system. And there's a set of services that you then build. Uh, you specify, you give a model for them. And their implementation just kind of depends upon if they happen to be implemented in VMs or they happen to be implemented in the switches. But from a service point of view, I can now glue services together without regard to how they were implemented at the next lower level. So that was the software stack. Sometimes we represent the software this way because ultimately what you're saying is at that purple level for, the, for cord as a whole, I'm basically building a service graph. And I say I want my residential subscribers, and here I'm gonna use residential as the example. I want my residential subscribers to get service from a virtual OLT that then becomes a tenant of a virtual subscriber gateway, VSG, which becomes a tenant of the virtual router, vRouter. And there's some other subservices down there that they depend on. So for example, the, vol the blue ones are implemented on top of ONOS and the red ones are implemented on top of OpenStack in this particular picture. And collectively then it's this kind of a recursive picture, if you will, every one of these, uh, these services has a controller, which is to say this is the interface by which you, you can execute you know, my, my API but then all of these services together, I, I establish the dependencies between them, and then I build a controller for cord as a whole. So you can think of that cord controller as offering the northbound interface to this box, which happens to be filled with commodity stuff on the inside. So that, in a nutshell, is what the platform is about. It's how to build a service graph. And the service graph I build for E cord, and the service graph I build for R cord and M cord just happen to have different things pulled into the service graph. Where we'd like to go next, by the way, is I can build service graphs that have both E and M and R cord intermixed because after all, it is a common platform. It's just a matter of switching out the, the access technologies and, the, and the, uh, the, the ONOS apps in this case. Okay, so what I wanna do with the last few minutes is kind of pop up a little bit to the big picture. This is a bit of a drill down to give you a sense of what the platform is about. So the big picture is that what we're building in essence is a multi-tier cloud. And at, at the top of that pyramid is the commodity clouds. They're not going away anytime soon. And that's where ultimately I go get my infinite amount of capacity if I need it, and I pay, I pay pennies on the dollar for it. But we also then know that to get closer to the edge where the customers are, a lot of businesses will put some point of presence in the internet exchanges. So instead of just a handful of commodity sites, uh, I might go to tens or approaching 100 internet exchanges and I'll, I'll get some capacity in there and I'll put my virtual machines running my business apps there. But ultimately what this is about is the access edge. And so this is Cord's sweet spot. It's basically how can we build something at the edge that is just the last tier of this multi-tier cloud because that's the point that di it, it differs in a very important way in that access, whether it's wireless or wireline, is actually a part of what's inside of that, those green clouds at the edge. And of course, the reason I want to do that is because that's where the users are. All right, so this kind of begs the question, are the green clouds at the edge where Cord lives different than what is back in the commodity or what's in the intermediate exchanges? And by the way, you could put private clouds in here if you wanted as well. They're kind of uh, per perhaps positioned in particular locations and probably not as big as the commodity, probably not as close to the edge as, as the edge access clouds. Well, so this is a high-level picture of what a data center looks like. It's, it's, ro it's, it's row after row of, com of computants, commodity compute and storage racks connected by a switching fabric with a WAN router that connects you up, out, out to the rest of the internet. And so what's interesting about this picture is that it has really good east-west bandwidth. And that's the property of, this, of the leaf spine switching fabric. I can get up in one hop, I can get to, to another uh, node in the cluster. It also has, relatively speaking, relatively speaking, very, very thin northbound uh, bandwidth. And that is to say, no matter how fat the pipe is into a data center, it's really quite small compared to the millions of customers that are at the edge with all of their one to 10 megabit uh, fiber lines coming in. And so what Cord is about is to say, that's great for the data center that's in the warehouse in, in Reston, Virginia, but what about the little central office down at the street corner? Well, basically what we've done is we've taken the 
connection to the back, to the rest of the internet, and we've moved it out to the edge. It's not a router, it's now actually my access network. And so at one end, and again, I'm gonna use the, I'll just use GPON as the example, this is the residential case. At one end, I've got IO devices, and again, these are racks of these, one U devices, that are connecting out to my subscribers, and at the other end, I have some, what used to be the northbound, basically, this is now connecting me upstream into my, into my uh, network operator backbone. And what is that? Well, it depends on the technology I happen to load into it, but one example, which is the one we started with, is uh, an, an open compute project, blessed device, that is, that is a GPON. It's a 48-port, 1U uh, unit. Now, it's open flow controlled in the way that we use it, so you can kind of think of it as like a switch. Or you can exactly think of it like a switch. It's an entire rack full of switches, kind of special purpose, purpose switches. I don't necessarily come in one port and go out another one. I come in one port and I go up the back hall, back to the top of, top of rack. But it's still a switch, it's still open flow controlled. And so this is the, the, the building block that we, that we use to build cord. And the key is that, again, from the platform point of view, this is now white box switches, servers, storage, and access devices all rolled up into one. And it's because I've got this, I've got racks of access devices that makes this different than what you would find at a data center. One final thing to say about this is I keep drilling down and showing you examples from our cord. And my next talk in a couple of minutes is about our cord in a little bit more detail. But I want to emphasize that this platform where I've got the purple box and all of this stuff is common. All I do is I load up some, oh, some devices for the wireline case, and I load up a bunch of services that understand wireline. I load, load, load up a bunch of mobile devices, and I load on the mobile services. I load up some enterprise uh, access devices. I load up some enterprise services. Today, it's because of the market segments between these three silos, they tend to be disjoint, but where we really want to take this is I could build cord that have, would have a mix of the devices and a mix of the, of the services, and there would be a lot of commonality. I wouldn't have to load a different CDN for wireline and wireless. I would load one CDN service in, for example, whatever it might be, IoT or whatever. So this is, again, big picture of where we're going. I, we, we, we started calling these domains of use in the cord lingo, but basically they are different access technologies brought into, brought into the common platform. One last kind of high-level picture of what's next. We know ONAP is there. There are different ways of thinking about how cord and ONAP play together, but one very straightforward thing is that ONAP can control cord in the same way ONAP controls AIC. Now, can it do better? Is there tighter integration? Absolutely. But minimally, that would be the place that we could start, and then we could explore how there can be tighter integration. But one of the things that kind of, kind of a, turns things on its head to think about is think of Cord as yet another cloud. Another cloud. It's infrastructure. It's, it has an infrastructure controller, and ONAP understands infrastructure controllers. It used to understand infrastructure controllers to, to control larger data centers like AT&T's integrated cloud, uh, but they also, by, by the way, use infrastructure server controllers to control other external clouds. And it's just, you know, think of Cord as a peer of those. It's a special peer. There's lots of them, and they're smaller. But at some level, they're a very similar thing. What's unique about it is its capabilities at the edge, which is completely foreign to a, a typical data center type cloud. So we are a, an open source project. There's lots and lots of ways to get involved, to get on the Slack channels, get on the mailing lists, start asking questions, and start picking up projects. We've now just announced, I believe, four brigades, which are opportunities to join uh, the community and to work on some specific deliverables that we have in mind that are, are important for the community, for the community to work on. So there's lots of ways to get involved. And I think I've got a, about a minute for any questions there might be. We're now in the I produce and you consume part of the of the agenda. <laughs> but I'm happy to 